Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about number six from the 2021 Calc BC exam. It is the series question as usual. So let's take a look. Um, the function G has derivatives of all orders. Actually, this part is irrelevant to the first question. Um, but anyway, the McLaurin series for G is given by this thing on its interval of convergence. Part A, state the conditions necessary to use the integral test to determine convergence of the series, the sum from zero to infinity, one over e to the n. All right, integral test, you need the function to be uh, positive, continuous, and decreasing. So those three things. So I'm basically going to write that down. Um, f of x in this particular case would be e to the negative x because we're we're summing up 1 over e to the n. Um, so f of x is e to the negative x. And that is definitely a positive, continuous, uh, and decreasing function. So it's positive, continuous, decreasing. We don't need to prove it. It just says state the conditions necessary. Those are the conditions, and it happens to satisfy them. Uh, use the integral test to show that the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over e to the n converges. All right, so we're going to have to do an, an improper integral. We're going to have to nail the notation. That's important when you do these. So we're going from 0 to infinity, which really means we're doing the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to b. So we do that, e to the negative x dx. Still going to be a limit because there's still going to be b in the problem. Um, the antiderivative is negative e to the negative x, and we're evaluating from 0 to b. Then we're still going to need a limit, but we're going to fundamental theorem this. So plug in b, and also I'm going to make it um, 1 over e to the b, and then minus plug in 0, we get this. So 1 over e to the b, when b goes to infinity, definitely goes to 0, because e to the b is going to infinity, um, or I, get, I mean, yeah, it's just it's straight up 0. And then... Uh, e to the 0 is 1, so you get 0 minus negative 1, so you get positive 1. All right, so we're basically done. We just have to, like, answer the question, right? So uh, since the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x dx, remember we defined f of x up top where you could have said e to the negative x dx, but since this is a convergent uh, improper integral, the series does the same thing. So the series is going to converge as well. All right, that is part A has nothing to do with the stem of the uh, problem, but I don't know, we'll see if it comes back around. So now we know that uh, this is a convergent series. Use the limit comparison test with the series, the sum from zero to infinity, one over e to the n. That's the one we just dealt with to show that the series g of one, so you're plugging one into g of x. All right, I guess it kind of has something to do with it, um, which is from zero to infinity of negative one to the n, blah, blah, blah. Converges absolutely. All right, so converges absolutely is a, a pretty easy concept. It may, basically means like get rid of anything that alternates. So I'm just going to do the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the nth term of that crazy looking thing. So it's the absolute value of negative one to the n over two e to the n plus three. So that's that's like, I don't know, a sub n, and then b sub n is going to be 1 over e to the n. So we're going to find the limit of this. Um, so here, I get the limit as n approaches infinity. e to the n over 2 e to the n plus 3. The absolute value kills the negative 1 to the n. And then this limit is definitely just 1 half. You could use L'Hopital's if you want, but like you just don't need to. Um, that's 1 half. So since our original series converged and we got a positive finite value. So I didn't write that down, I probably should have, but since that converges, um, the series that we compared it to, which is actually one over two e to the n, converges by the limit comparison test. So that's what we showed so far. Then we can say, since this series converges, since one over two e to the n plus three converges, we know that the original series converges absolutely because when you take the absolute value of its terms, you get an, a convergent series. So this is how you go about doing that. It's kind of like a, first we had to use the limit comparison test, so that's interesting. Um, but then once we showed that one over two e to the n plus three converges, we know that the other one converges absolutely. So we got that. All right, this is, this is like a good, interesting series question so far. Let's see what the next part has for us. Um, Determine the radius of convergence for the Maclaurin series for G. All right, so that's going to be uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the n plus first term. So that's going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, over 
2 e to the n plus 1 plus 3 times, so it's either a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n or a sub n plus 1 times 1 over a sub n. So what I'm going to do is flip over the nth term and just multiply. Really common thing to do. I think almost everyone does it because it's so much writing otherwise. So we get this. This limit, so the, uh, the negatives are just killed by the absolute value. x to the n plus 1 over x to the n is just the absolute value of x. And then all of that stuff that's left is actually just going to give you 1 over e. So that's what we're ending up with. The reason for that, I'll do it up here a little bit, is that that denominator can be rewritten as 2e times e to the n plus 3. And then, uh, I don't know, if you use like L'Hopital's rule once, you get 2e to the n over 2e times e to the n. The e to the n's cancel, so you have 2 over 2e. And then that's just 1 over e. So that's why we get the absolute value of x over e. This for us to converge. So the open interval of convergence is definitely going to be when the absolute value of x over e is less than 1. That means that the absolute value of x has to be less than e. That's the radius of convergence, and that's all we had to determine. So uh, let's say, therefore, the radius of convergence is e. A very surprising radius of convergence. I don't know if I've ever really done a problem like that where that ended up. They're really good at writing problems. It's kind of neat. All right, let's look at d. First two terms of the series, g of 1, are used to approximate g of 1. <laughs> okay. Um, we just showed that this is um, absolutely convergent, which means that it converges uh, when you take the absolute value of the terms. It definitely converges when it alternates. It's a convergent alternating series. Use the alternating series error bound to determine an upper bound on the error of the approximation. So convergent uh, alternating series, the error is, at most, the first term that is omitted. So I'm going to write this in a funny way. I think I could just write down the answer, but I'm not really sure. Um, so I'm going to say that the absolute value of g of 1, which is the actual value, minus, I'm going to write down the quantity of the first term, so that's when you plug in 0, plus when you plug in the second term, so when you plug in 1, so the first term is 0, the second term is 1, so we plugged in 0, we plugged in 1, that's the first two terms. So the absolute value of that thing minus g of 1 has to be less than, what would you plug in to get the next term? You'd plug in 2. So it's less than that. That is the error. All right, and that's question number six, the, the not-so-dreaded series question, because if you know what you're doing, they're really not that bad. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.